turn to Romans 11 again. And I purposely didn't get into this yesterday because <clears throat> it kind of opened up the message for today. What? Oh, she's going to get you one minute. It's fine. She's going to get the CD anyway. Verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part, or is partial, is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. The fullness of the Gentiles has already come in. If you, well, from speaking to most of the church members, well, I say most, I shouldn't say most, a few of the church members, their fullness has come. They, they can't get any more full. They're so full of it that it's beyond me how they're even still surviving. Um, they have become extremely puffed up against Israel. And they don't understand why or how, but it's because of their blindness. And talking to several people this morning, um, I wasn't going to get on the internet this week, but then the Holy Spirit started kind of really nagging at me to check some things out, and I got on there, and you wouldn't believe the crap that's being spread just during this Feast of Tabernacles alone. People are saying that, that the New Testament is not for Israel, it's for just the Gentiles. And that they're only under the, the New Testament law. There is no such thing as an Old Testament law to a Gentile. That's not even in the Scripture. You can go through the New Testament and see it's not in the Scripture. Anybody that even promotes that crap is of the devil. I mean, it's it's pathetic to the excuses and the twisting of the Scripture that they'll go to to prove it. And it's not proving it. It's just throwing it back in their face. But anyway... Uh, I'm going to show you this. Go to Revelation 11. And a lot of people, <clears throat> there are a lot more people today that are turning back to the original Hebrew language that are actually going back and searching out the word than ever before. Than ever before. I mean, I didn't realize there were that many people that actually believe the way we do, but there are. They're starting to finally get it, and it's, unfortunately, it, it's, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately, fortunately, it is Israel that's getting a hold of it, and the Gentiles are being thrown back in the dust. But I want to show you this, because in verse 1, well, 1 through uh, verse 2, John reveals something here that even the Gentiles today have overlooked they don't care to see it they don't want to see it verse 1 there was given me a reed like unto a rod and the word rod simply means a staff for correction alright <clears throat> the angel stood saying rise measure the temple of Hoya and the altar and them that worship therein in other words he's saying measure the amount of people that are in it now you couldn't do that if it was an innumerable amount of people. Right? The word says Abraham see would be as the stars of heaven, but nobody really understands what that means. Alright? As the stars of heaven means they're going to be shining upon the earth. But as the sand of the sea, it means they're going to be beyond numbering. There's no way that you could even number them all. And that's the way the Gentiles are today. And I'm going to show you this. But the court which is without the temple or outside the temple, leave out. Measure it not. It is given unto the Gentiles. So the outer court is given to the Gentiles. I can't tell you how many churches or how many people I've talked to that have preached over and over and over again that the Gentiles are going to be in the inner court while the Jews are going to be cast out. That is the opposite of the scripture. 
all right the word says what the outer courts given to the Gentiles means that's the only thing they're going to be given all right how would you like to grow up knowing that the only thing you're going to receive from your parent is the door that's it that's all you're going to get I mean, I've heard several parents make comment. I can't wait till they're 18, and they are gone. They're history. I don't want to even see them come back. No child wants to grow up looking for that. So why do they want to remain Gentiles? Because somebody has been lying to them, and they're not paying attention to it. All right, and watch this. It is given to the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. No, well, look at that up. It means they're going to make a mockery of it, or or mock it. All right. <clears throat> Go to Revelation twenty-two. In other words, as a Gentile, the only thing you're going to be witnessing is the marriage supper. You're not going to actually be involved. And I told you, this, huh? They won't be able to feast. They won't be able to share in the word. And you can't, you, you can't even explain this to them because they are that stiff-necked. They won't hear it. They don't understand that a heathen and a gentile is nothing but an apios and a patty on their children. You have to be grown up. A weos fully mature in order to be an Israelite. You can't tell them that because they have associated, or I should say, should say they have equated rebellion with Israel when they don't understand that the physical Israel, the ones that were cast out, the ones that were cut off from the branch or from the tree, they were not Israel. They were Gentiles. They were a Gentile people that the only reason why they were pulled out of Egypt was to fulfill the promise given to Abraham. Everybody following that? He saw Abraham's children and said, because of his covenant with him, I'm going to pull them out. That's the only reason. Because you notice they kept rebelling, rebelling, rebelling. No different than a Gentile today. They keep rebelling, rebelling, rebelling. Now watch this. <clears throat> Verse 10. Maybe. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. I want you to highlight that. It is at hand. The time is now. For 2,000 years, it's always been now. Present. It could be any day that Yahshua shows up and the Gentiles will be cut off. Is everybody following that? Now watch this. Him that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. In other words, you, you're not going to persuade the evil. You're not going to persuade the unrighteous. You're not going to persuade the unjust. Period. Trust me, I've tried it. I've done it every way possible. I've come to them nicely. I've explained things to them clearly. They don't want it. They full well reject the truth, knowing that it's the truth. They know it's the truth. They don't want it. Because it's kind of like <clears throat> some people I know, if it's not their idea, they'll sit on it for a year, two years, until it becomes their idea. Until they think that you've forgotten it, and then they'll be like, oh, wait a minute. Here's an idea. Unfortunately, I work with a couple of them. But that's the way they are. That's the way every Gentile is. They're not going to accept it until it's their idea. Then they'll accept it. All right, now watch this. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. In other words, if you've done evil, that's going to be your reward, evil. You've done righteous, that's going to be your reward, righteousness. And watch. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do what? 
not my commandments, his commandments. That's the law. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life. Did you know that if you obey the law, which Hoya said to do, and, and I want you to think about this logically, why would Hoya give us a law and then turn around and take it away after he spent so much time? Who here knows how many years he spent trying to get his people to obey it? Six thousand. Well, I'm talking about before Yahshua. Oh. Almost 5,000 years. He was trying to get his people to obey it. Why would he spend so much time just to turn around and say, you know what? You're never going to do it. I'm just going to take it away from you. You know what that does? It makes him a hypocrite. Of course it makes him a liar. Of course it makes him a liar. And then you got people that come on the scene and say, oh, well, that's just for Israel. So you're admitting that you're not going to grow up. That's what it is. An Israelite is somebody who's mature. All right, and watch this. That they might have right to the tree of life. If you obey the law, it's your right to go to the tree of life. Did you know that? Now, wait a minute. In the garden, we were kicked out, right? Why were we kicked out? Disobedience. For disobedience. So he just said, if you do the commandments, perform the commandments, that's your right to go back in and partake of the garden. That's your right to go back in and partake of the tree. Watch this. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Not climb up some other way. Not go through a window. It's your right to go through the gate. Watch. For without, on the outside, we were just talking about the outer court, remember? Our dogs. Go look up the definition of a dog in Isaiah. It means someone who's ignorant. My people are all dumb dogs, loving to slumber, lying down. Now watch this. For without our dogs, sorcerers, pharmakia means a pharmacist. So all the medicines and everything are outside the kingdom. They won't. They will not be allowed to enter in. I want to show you this real quick because this is the cool part. What's the city? We are. Each individual person here is a city. Go back and read again. Yah and Yahshua are the temple of it. Hello. Now watch. Whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and it's true, anything they can find to idolize, they do. Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I can't tell you how many Gentiles I've talked to that have twisted scripture to, to, to fit their own belief rather than just go back and obey the commandments. It's real simple. Oh, well, the word says we can't do it. No, it does not. Nowhere. Peter said our fathers couldn't do it. He didn't say we can't. Hello, watch. Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, I, Yahshua, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in where? The assembly. In the assembly. In other words, this is for you to testify among the people. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come. Are we saying come? We're telling everybody to come to the truth. They don't want to hear it. Let him that heareth say, Come. Let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take 
the water of life. How much? Did he say pay for it? Nope. He said take it freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, Paul you shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. I want to show you real quick what the word book means. In the Greek it's biblios. And every church on the face of the planet has swore up and down that, oh, well, this is just talking about the book of Revelation. We're not supposed to add or take from the book of Revelation. It's funny because if you go back in the law, Paul you said don't add or take from the law either. Where did we get the word Bible from? Biblios. Same Greek word. So he's saying all these books, all the books that I have spoken, don't add to or take from it. And what have they done? Twisted it. And they twist it so that they can add to and take from it. So we follow. Now watch. If any man shall take away from the words of the prophecy of this book, Paul should take away his part out of the book of life, out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. In other words, you're not going to have any possession or any thing to do with this book. All the judgments that are on it, you're not even going to partake of them. You're not even going to be around to partake of them. Hello? Watch. Exodus 3. And I showed you uh, last week the baptism in the cloud. Today, we're going to get into the fire. And we're going to really show you what the fire is. And it's really simple. If you check it out, search it out, and double check it. Exodus 3. I want to go to 2. Verse 2. And the angel of Hawaii appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, or saw, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Now, watch the I'm going to go out a little bit farther here. Watch the audacity that Moses has. Because that's literally what it is. It's, it's audacity. Because he, he says, this bush is on fire and I'm going to see exactly what it is that's burning, why it's burning, how it's burning, yet the bush is not burnt. All right, now watch. And when Hoya saw that he turned aside to see, Hoya called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh th hither. In other words, don't come near it. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am Hoya of thy father, the, the Almighty of Abraham, the Almighty of Isaac, and the Almighty of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Hoya. Now watch, watch what just took place, okay? He's talking to this bush, or I, I should say he's contemplating this bush, and as soon as he hears the words of who he is, how he identifies himself, automatic fear hits him. Okay, now watch this, because baptism of fire literally will put fear in you. You will be so afraid to disobey the commandments that you won't do it. And that is what has been missing in the earth since Joshua was here, is fear. Alright, watch this. Genesis 1. And we all know what Hebrews... Uh, 412 says okay the word is quick and powerful go back to I believe it's Jeremiah and Jeremiah makes the comment or I shouldn't say Jeremiah Holly makes the comment he says it's not my word like as a fire okay 
And it is. The word is a fire. It literally separates your soul from your spirit. And, and this is the part most people misunderstand and twist and really don't bother to look into. What does light do? It exposes everything that's hidden. Okay? And, and people don't grasp this enough. What is hidden to you? It's your spirit. Alright? Your spirit is what is hidden. Which is why you have to be baptized in fire. That fire is to expose the deception, the deceit, that the soul has tried to put on you. It's the seed of Satan. It's been the seed of Satan since the garden. Alright? He subjected mankind to that deception. And it, I, it cracks me up every time I hear a Gentile preach, Oh, well... Jesus defeated Satan, so I don't have to worry about him anymore. That couldn't be the furthest from the truth. Where did you walk in his shoes? Where did you perform it? Because he said, walk in my steps. Take up your cross and follow me. That means you do the same freaking thing I did. Alright, watch. Genesis 1. And I'm going to show you this because this is, this is the way how he explained it to me. Alright. And once you get this, it'll make so much more sense. So much more sense. Verse 1. In the beginning, how you created the heaven and the earth. Man was just dust. Right? Okay, now watch. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And spirit of Hawaii moved upon the face of the waters. What did you just see? Nope. Verse 2. Earth, which we are, was without form and void. Naturally. Naturally. We are formless and we are void. And it cracks me up when people say, Oh, well, you need to come to the church and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know what? You're still formless and void. There's only one name under heaven that can deliver you from the void. That can de deliver you from the formless. It's called Yahshua. One of Satan's biggest lies, biggest deceptions, and it wasn't hard for him to do. All he had to do was hide man's soul. Hello. Watch. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. What is the deep within you? I can show you in the scripture. It's your spirit. Genesis 1. Genesis 2. Darkness is upon your spirit. Why? Because Satan put it there. And I'm going to show you this because sitting in bed the other night, I, I just turned to Tasha and I started laughing because I couldn't, I couldn't believe the way he just explained it to me. It made so much more sense. So much more sense. If you can grasp Genesis chapter 1, which we're going to do the whole week, if you can grasp Genesis chapter 1, you're done. It's that that simple. Alright, now watch this. <clears throat> the Spirit of Holly moved upon the face of the waters. Okay? So he's moving. If you look up the word moving, it means he's literally dividing upon the waters. Alright? And Hoya said, let there be light, and there was light. Yah saw the light, that it was good, and Yah divided the light from the darkness. Now, <laughs> here's where it gets interesting. There's a book, or a book, there's a verse in Psalms, and I, Psalms, Proverbs, 
Proverbs. And I, I love it. It says, The spirit within man is the lamp of Hoya. It literally lights up the depths. That's what it says. All right? And I looked up the word spirit, it means intellect. Intelligence. Intelligence enlightens all the deep. The more intelligence he gives you, the more light he gives you, the more the deep is gone. Stop. Is intelligence the same as understanding? Yeah. Kind of. It's a combination of all three. Because the intelligence of man. Well, different kind of intelligence. Yeah. This is a spiritual intelligence, nothing to do with physical. It, it doesn't matter how much you go to school, how much you learn in, in nature. Well, that's not, the, that's not the intellect. The intellect is literally the divine knowledge from himself. Alright, and I'm going to show you this. Yah said, let there be light, and there was light. Look up the word light, it means understanding. Everybody here has heard the phrase, light bulb. Or watch the old cartoons where they got an idea, the light bulb came up. Where do you think we got that from? People knew that back in those days. But they've never put two and two together. All right, watch. Yah saw the light that it was good, and Yah divided intelligence or understanding from ignorance. So the minute his intellect enters into you, there's a separation. And it's a big separation. Because now... I, and I'm not boasting or anything like this, but I step onto these group pages on Facebook, and I, I have no choice. I'm surrounded by fools, idiots. I mean, I just stand out, and I, it's not me, but I stand out. I mean, I get all kinds of people who are following me around the pages, and I'm not doing anything but trying to explain the scripture. You know, somebody will have a question, I'll answer it, and then all of a sudden I start getting attacked by. 50, 60 different people. I don't see them nailing anybody else. I see them argue every once in a while with, with one another, but they don't ever come after one person and nail them. Now watch this. And y'all call the light day. We are of the day. Is that not what Paul said? watch and the darkness he called night the ignorant he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day so day one all right that's what he does in day one he gives you intellect now there's a proverb in the book of Psalms if you're running your mouth you're a fool because as long as your mouth is running, you're not taking anything in. You're not learning anything. You're just running your mouth. You can't hear and run your mouth at the same time. Anybody ever tried it? Have you tried it? You can't do it, can you? You can't hear while your mouth's running. It's the same thing with smelling. You know, you can't smell while you're, while you're breathing. You know, she can't smell your own smells. Unless you're just that raunchy. <clears throat> but watch this. Yah said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the heavens. Or, sorry, in the midst of the waters. Let it divide waters from waters. So you have a firmament that exists between the waters from above and the waters from beneath. The knowledge from above, the knowledge from beneath. Now, the word firmament, you ready for this? Let me show you real quick. It's Rakia, R A Q I Y A, and it literally means a visible arch of the sky. 
or an expanse. So there's a great distance, great distance between the knowledge from above and the knowledge from beneath. Hello. Is man closer to the earth or is man closer to the heavens? Man is closer to the earth. Okay. So that means you've got a long ways to go if you want to receive from above, right? Now watch. Because this is where it gets good. Well, not that it hasn't been good. He divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And how it called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. So what did he call heaven? The firmament. Okay, so the expanse between the waters from above and the waters from beneath is called heaven. What is man trying to get into? Go run and jump, because you're in it. Did you know that? You're in it. You literally breathe it every day. So why is man trying to go up? It's called ignorance. Well, here too. Yeah. So we're having a hell in the same spot. Yeah. Hello. It's the ignorance. That's why they're wanting to jump up or go up, and it's already here. Now watch. And Yah said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place. Let the dry land appear. And it was so. Are you dry land? Yeah, I was still earthy. I'm still man. No, watch this. Are you still dry? Are you dry land? Land isn't there. Do you have waters? I can't teach you. I don't think I'm dry. Okay. She just hit it right on the head. Nobody, nobody paid attention to it. The word dry doesn't exist there. Dry doesn't exist there. Okay. Look that up again. That's not what it says. In the Hebrew, the word dry is land. Let the land appear. We are the land. <laughs> Hello? So let the land or the creation appear. Now watch. And it was so. And how it called the dry land earth. Again, there's the word land again. Dry is not there. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. So he just separated two separate people. Now, what is the difference in a sea and dry land? I'm showing you the dust of the earth. In case you didn't notice that. Seas are salty, but if you've got a wound, they attack it. If you're weak in an area, that's what they go after. Hello? Look at all your preachers, all your ministers on TV. If they find out that you've got an error or you've got a problem somewhere, they're all on you. They're wanting you to pay for something. Well, you can pay, you know, if you pay your tithe and your offering, you'll be blessed above, beyond, blah, blah, blah. Instead of saying, wait, the tithe and the offering is for your obedience. That's it. You don't have to pay for anything. It's free. Oh, but brother so and so, you need to you need to give an offering of such and such. And if you give an offering of this amount, we'll give you this. There's a set amount in the word of what the offering and the tithe are supposed to be. Why do they cast out the law? The law. Because then they can add at any amount they want. It's called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And I'll show you that. Well, I've showed you that. But I'll show you that one of these days. <clears throat> and Yah saw that it was good. And Yah said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit 
tree yielding after or fruit after his kind are we not trees okay now watch this whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so I want you to see something here because he just depicts several different people you have heathen Gentiles technons weosses who are the technons no I'm talking about according to this it's the trees that bear fruit alright now watch in the evening and morning were the third day and Yah said here we go let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So, who are the lights? You notice, Yah not once, not once in the whole chapter of Genesis 1 ever declares the sun, the moon, or the stars. He never said, let there be light, I'm going to call it sun. Let there be light at night, I'm going to call it the moon. Let there be stars in the heavens, I'm going to call it the stars. Do you see any of that anywhere? No. It's still not. He didn't name them. Because he didn't ever choose them. Watch this. <clears throat> Where am I at? Yah said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. We are the lights. The elect are the lights. Let them be for signs. And for seasons. To every purpose there is a season. Doesn't matter who you are, you have a season. But it's for the lights. You can't have a season without light. Did you know that? Every every season has its own light in its own light position. There is a time to fall. There is a time to spring up. There's a time to be put out to winter. There's a time to be brought in for summer. I'm going to show you this. Hold on. For seasons, for days, and years. You have some ministers, their only goal, their only job, is to train you for a few days. Some, for years. Fortunately, I got stuck for the years. Actually, I think Dad got stuck for the years, but still yet. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven. Where? Okay, so that's between the clouds and the ground. Where are the stars? What? Stars. No. No. Is that what he just said? Where are the stars? He just got done saying, look, here's the lights, the stars, or the, the lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light for the days, the seasons, the years, right? Okay, did you know in every season there is a certain star pattern? But verse 16 he says, wait, but he made the stars also. Do you see the difference? Yeah. In other words, he's not describing the stars here. He's saying the stars have no place. I'm not talking about the stars here. I'm talking about my lights. Everybody's got this confusion. They're saying, oh, well, that's the sun and the moon. What the crap happened on day one? When he said, let there be light. Where did that come from? Is everybody following that? It's understanding. Let it be light. Now watch. 
Let them be for lights in the firm of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. So he made us to give light upon the earth. Watch. And Yah made two great lights. Notice the word and. It means what? Also. So on top of these lights, in the firmament, he also made two more lights. And then he made the stars also. I'm going to show you this in the scripture because this this is where I started chuckling because I, it's been right in front of us this whole time and I never understood. I never even saw it. Never saw it. Watch this. Yah made two great lights: the great light to rule the day, us, and the lesser light to rule the night, them. He made the stars also, and they follow the stars hello do you ever wonder why movie stars Hollywood movie stars are called stars <laughs> because they're out and exposed they're flashing all the time mm -hmm. So what are we supposed to be doing? Does that mean we're supposed to be on TVs? So how are we supposed to shine? You can't if you don't have the light. Watch. Yah said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may, that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Yah created great whales, every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, every winged fowl after his kind, and Yah saw that it was good. Yah blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters and the seas. What? Okay, so the beasts, the animals, natural nature is going to be in the seas. What is a sea? It's a Gentile. Okay, so the Gentiles are going to be filled with animal sentient, animal nature. Okay, now watch. Where was I at? Um, 22. 22. Let the fowl multiply in the earth, the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Verse 24, and Yah said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. Now, are we not the earth? Now I want to show you this. Cattle, creeping thing, beast of the earth after his kind, it was so. And Yah made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind. Everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and Yah saw it was good. And Yah said, Make man's image and likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Yah created man in his own image. In, in, in the image of Yah created he him, male and female created he them. Yah blessed them, and Yah said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, the sea, or the fowl, the air, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Yah said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, Every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me. Now we just got done talking about the trees, right? So the technons are supposed to provide for the weosses. Okay, now watch this. To you it shall be for me, to every beast of the earth, to every fowl of the air, to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. Yah saw everything they had made, and behold it was good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And on the seventh day he does what? Yes. Okay. I want to show you this real quick. Y'all explain this to me. As clear as day. Day one, I want you to write this down. Day one. And for the rest of this week, I want you to go through this on each day and do it. What did he say? Six days, six days shalt thou labor, on the seventh day thou shalt what? Yeah. Sabbath. Now watch. One day, truth is exposed.
That's what the light is. Truth is exposed. Day two, a division between teachings. Day three, we learn to produce fruit after his kind. Day four. Is everybody ready? Day four. He makes us lights in the firmament of heaven to give light on the earth. Day five. He separates us from the animal. and gives us dominion over it. You ready? Day six, we're created in his image. Let me repeat that. Day six, we become his image, his likeness. If we perform the six days like he commanded us to do, on the sixth day, before we even, even enter Sabbath, we would be in his image and in his likeness. Did you know that? Dead works, what is it? It's without form and void. And I was explaining this to Tasha the other night. It was last night, wasn't it? We were coming back from Walmart. Yeah. On the way up, the Holy Spirit started sharing something with me. The churches, and we, we've all heard it for years, that Pentecost was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They received tongues, and that's what the baptism of the Holy Ghost was. That, well, your sign that you received the Holy Ghost was that you could speak in tongues. You know that is a bold-faced lie? Pentecost was not about baptism of the Holy Ghost. Who here knows what it was? It was eternal judgment. They literally were granted eternal judgment. You know how? Because what is the sign of the Holy Ghost? And I, I've heard so many churches preach this. The Word says, now keep in mind, going through the book of Acts, it says when the apostles preached that the Holy Ghost fell on them. Does it anywhere, anywhere in the book of Acts state that when they were speaking to them, Tongues of fire sat upon the people they were ministering to. No. And they not all spake with tongues either. So how did they know, or how do we know, that, the, that they received the Holy Ghost? It's real simple. They received the truth with gladness of heart. They accepted what the apostles were preaching. That was how you knew they had received the Holy Ghost. Does it not say that he, if you receive the Holy Ghost, He should give you all truth, lead you into all truth? Okay? So if you accept the truth, you are given the Holy Ghost. Hello? You know, there are very, very few in the earth today that can actually speak in tongues. The true tongues. The rest are all false. Did 
they know that? Because they're actual languages. They're not dead languages. And they're not repeats. But, okay. I don't know if you can or not. I haven't listened to you. Anyway, what? Hebrews 4. Just, never mind. Anyway, day 7, we Sabbath. Hebrews 4. I'm going to show you this. And it, it, like I was telling you, I was laughing when he gave this to me because he gave me Genesis first. And he explained it to me first. And I could not, could not figure it out. And then all of a sudden he said in Hebrews 4, I'm thinking, what, did, what does that have to do with Genesis chapter 1? Everything. Everything. It's the foundation of the world. Watch. Verse 1, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of. Now, the, the Greek word is sabbaton, which means Sabbath. So he's saying, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his Sabbath, any of you should seem to come short of it. Now, why would we come short of it? Rebellion. Refusing to obey the law. One. Verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. The same gospel that the apostles heard was the same thing Moses and them heard. But watch what the difference is. But the word preached did not profit them. It was of no profit. They didn't learn anything from it. Why not? It wasn't mixed with faith. Why? He says it right right after it. Because they just heard it. They were hearers and not doers. And it cracks me up when I was having a conversation with one of the Church of Christ pastors. He makes a comment, Oh, well, the Old Testament's a good history lesson, but we can't actually perform any of that anymore. Then you're a hearer only. That's what you just got done telling me. You're a hearer only. And then he blocked me. But anyway, verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into Sabbath. As he said, as I have sworn my wrath, if they shall enter into my Sabbath, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. His works were already finished in six days. So what have we been missing this entire time? Six days shalt thou labor, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest. Six days you're going to follow the image of what he laid out in Genesis chapter 1. You're done. You've got to get rid of that formless void, which is the traditions. It's everything that you were raised and molded up into, nature. Get rid of it, cast it out. And get the truth. Just go back to Genesis chapter 1. Read all the way through Revelation. That's the truth. Genesis 1 through all the way through Revelation. And by the time you get on day 6. Yes you can do it in a day. By the time you get to day, day 6. You're in his image. And his likeness. Then you can rest. Just Genesis 10 Revelation. No. Genesis 2 Revelation. Entire Bible. Yep. You can do it in six days. You know how? It's called the Holy Ghost. It's called the Holy Ghost. He can give it to you all in from Genesis to Revelation in a matter of minutes. Let there be light. And there was light. And that was day one. How do you think it happened to Paul? Paul had a bright light, and that was it. He, he automatically got it right there. He didn't have to sit under any disciples. He didn't have to, have to sit under any apostles. He was done. He got it. How do you think Joshua got it? Same way. Watch this. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day, on this wise, and Yah did Sabbath the seventh day from all his works, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my Sabbath. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. 
Did he say most? Some. Did he say many? Some. Did he say all? Just some. Most. Just some. So what's he waiting for? The sum. Just a few. All right. We're the Marines of all the rest of the religions. The few, the proud, the Marines. Get it? Except we're not proud. But my point is, we're the few. That's it. There's. He's only waiting on a few. But how many years have we missed it? Well, how many years have you missed it? You too. You just got it. Actually, I got it the other night. I've been waiting on this for like two weeks. I know. Isn't it two and weeks? Been two weeks. Your yeah, because it was good. <laughs> and to they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of what? Because of what? Entered in because of what? Disobedience. It's unbelief and disobedience. Hello? Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying, In David. So he's telling you again, wait a minute. David said again from the foundation. You want to, I'll show you Genesis to Revelation really quick. This is the way the Holy Ghost gave it to me. Genesis Revelation, you ready? Six days all the way through. There's examples of six days in every book. There's the foundation in every book. It's just told from a different angle. Watch this. Notice he just get done, got done saying all the works, everything that Holly ever did was done in six days. He's not lifted a finger to do anything else. He's been resting this whole time. The only reason why he comes back, or I shouldn't say back, the whole reason why he comes to earth is for one reason, one reason alone. Because he's pissed off. That's the only reason he's coming back. That's what he's doing. He's going to burn the rest of them. But not literally. Literally. They've pissed him off the point. He's gonna the word says he's gonna burn them. The no, he's gonna burn them. Those that have rejected and rebelled his word, that they do not want to hear the truth. He's going to literally burn them as chaff. That's what the word says. He's gonna gather the tares and burn them. All he's gotta do is stand in their presence and they're consumed. Watch this. He limits a certain day in David, saying, Today, after so long a time, it's been so long since the foundation, I'm giving it to David. Now watch. Because David talks about the creation. Did you know that? Book of Psalms. He goes over and over and over through the chapters. Just about. I think I read four or five different times he mentions the foundation going all the way from day one to day seven. Watch. <clears throat> After so long a time, as it is said, today, 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 always present, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Do you know when he speaks, 99% of the time, the heart gets hardened? You know why? Because he speaks in rebuke. How are you led into all truth? Not by pleasing words. How do you get a child to follow truth? Spanking them. Disciplining them. Alright, now watch this. For if Yahshua had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? And in some translations of the Bible, they have this twisted to say, well, that's talking about Joshua the son of Nun. No, it's not. 
Joshua is coming back a second time. He didn't give rest the first time he was here. Watch this. If he had given them Sabbath, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a Sabbath to the people of Yah. For he that entered into his Sabbath, he also has ceased from his own works. That's all he did from his. Did you see that? So if you perform the six days of creation, like you were commanded to, like you were supposed to, you would already be in his Sabbath. You'd be already resting from your works. What are your works? No. It would be the works of sin. It would be the works of sin. That's your works. By day six, you'd be created in his image. Everybody following? Or is it too deep for you? too deep for you. Anyway, keep going. Psalm 78. All we've had to do for 6,000 years is emulate day one through day six is all. All we've had to do. Where did I say to go? Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Thank you. Verse 2, I will open my mouth in a parable, I will utter dark sayings of old. Now mind you, this is a parable. This is a dark saying of ancient times, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children. Stop for just a second. Is that what that says? We will not hide from their children. We will not hide from their children. Hello? We're not going to hide the dark sayings from their children. It's our job to expose it. We're the light of the world. Is that not what Yashua said? Now yeah. watch. Um, Showing to the generation to come the praises of Yah in his what? Strength. His wonderful works that he had done, day one through seven. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born. who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in Hoya and not forget the works of Hoya, but keep his commandments. Really simple. What is man forsaken? Well, most of man forsaken. For 2,000 years. One in particular. Not oh, come on. Hold your hand there. Speak up, Jane. Speak up, Jane. What? Nope. Nope. Exodus 20. Verse 8. Mom, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. The seventh is what? Is that what it says? It is the Sabbath from Hoya. It is the Sabbath from Hoya. Thy Almighty, in it thou shalt do not any work, or not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. What did that just say? 
not even the Gentiles, that are in thy gates. Well, that's a whole different story. Because you talk to the Gentiles today and they say, oh, nope, 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 nope. We don't observe that. Make a bet. You will or you'll perish. That's a commandment. Deuteronomy 28, 15, what did he say? If you don't hearken on my commandments and my words, you, everything you do will be cursed. And it is. Everything they do is cursed. And they don't even understand it. Watch. In six days, all you made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the Sabbath day. Wherefore, all you blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Another word for hallow means to set it apart. So he set it apart. What did he just tell us in the commandments? Six days. That's all I want you to work. I don't want you to work for three and a half years. I don't want you to work for 28 years. Six days is all you're supposed to work. And then enter into my rest. Hello. Watch. Go back. Psalm 78. Verse 7, that they might set their hope in Hoya and not forget the works of Hoya, but keep his commandments, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright. You know what that means? They remained a, a formless and void earth through all seven days. How many times have we done it? Hello. Where are you being? Psalm 78. I don't know what you mean by that. By what? By what you just said. They still didn't move the whole generation. Yeah. They set not their heart aright. Meaning that they kept the same attitude, the same form, their same opinions, their same traditions, all seven days. Instead of entering into his Sabbath like he commanded. Hello, watch this. Whose spirit was not steadfast with Hoya. Look up the word spirit, and it also means the intellect of man, the intelligence. Their in intelligence was not steadfast with Hoya. In other words, they didn't seek just his knowledge, they sought how to make profit how to eat, how to write, how to do everything else in the world, and neglected the word. Neglected forming their, their, well, his creation. You know, that's our job. Hello? He's already at rest. He's already, and this is what the church do not get. He is already resting from all his works. The word says so. It's our job now. We have to lay the works. We have to lay the foundation. Even Paul said, I build the foundation, another buildeth their upon. It's our job to lay the foundation. Anybody ever tell you, oh, well, you can't have salvation if you're working, make a bet? That's what Sabbath is. It's our salvation. We labor for six days, and on the seventh day, we're at rest. We're done. We finished that week. Are you following? Watch. But it's okay for them to go out and get a job and make big money and be the boss, but we can't labor for it. Talk about deception. Matthew 13.
Do y'all want to stop here? Yeah. Watch your mouth closed, not mm -hmm. open. Mm -hmm. 34, verse 34. I'll end on this one. All these things spake Yahshua unto the multitude in parables. Without a parable, spake he not unto them. Now, what's a parable? It's a dark saying. In other words, there's something behind what he's actually saying. If you are unlearned, perverted, a, a day one being, is everybody following me? You're void. You're formless. Which means you have no intelligence. There's no way you're going to figure this out. Is everybody following me? So why do the churches think, oh, well, he did away with the law. He spoke in parables. Not once did he ever state that he had done away with the law. Not once. But they've twisted that to say, oh, well, he said this. No, go back and read what Peter said about them. If they'll twist Paul's words, they'll twist his words, as they twist all scripture. The whole word is a parable. And if you're unlearned, you'll never understand it. If you're not a day six creature, you will not understand it. Most people have no idea what I just said. If you are formed in his image and his likeness, you will understand it. Oh, but I already am. No, you're not. You're still a day one creature. If you can pick up this word and you can understand what it's saying, Genesis to Revelation, you are a day six creature. You're in his image and his likeness. Oh, well, this scripture means this. No. I don't want to hear your meaning of it. I want to hear the word's meaning of it. That's the problem. If you cannot give me his meaning of it, you're not a day six creation. You're still in day five and four. An animal. A beast. Because that's what an animal and a beast do. They want to throw their own opinion into it. Instead of saying, let's see what his opinion is on this. Let's see what Paul's revelation is on this. Because with every scripture in the Bible, there's a backup. doesn't matter Old Testament or New Testament. There is something that testifies to it. And like I said, if they cannot verify a rapture, which they've not been able to do yet, there's only one scripture verse that they can take out of context. That's not a, that's not a witness. It'll never happen. You can't, there's no way you can base an entire doctrine on one scripture verse. It's not possible. Oh, well, he said if, if there will be two in the field, one should be taken. Yeah, look at where the one's taken. Destroyed. The first one that's taken gets destroyed. The one left behind is the one remaining. Hello? verse 35 that it might be fulfilled which is spoken by the prophet saying I will open my mouth in parables now he's quoting Psalm 78 I will utter things which have been kept secret from what from what days 1 through 6 hello did you know Hebrews 6 1 through 2 it's found in Genesis 1. This week we're going to go through it. Piece by piece. Because I'm going to show it to him. Right. That's what day one's about. Let there be light. Right. Well, watch this. Light, light, light has to come. Light has, and this is, I've been trying to explain this to people on the internet, and people just don't get it. Light has to come first, before anything else. 
if you don't have the light, you are formless and void. And light is simply what? Truth. Light is the separation from darkness. You've got to separate away from the darkness first, or you'll never get to day six. That's the problem that Israel fell into. They kept serving after other gods, after other devils, instead of saying, wait a minute, we separate ourselves from them, then Hoya will give us the light. That's why he said, come out and be you separate. Separate yourselves from the darkness before he will give light. Otherwise, you're going to end up perverting that light and mixing it with the Gentiles, and then you're going to come up with all kinds of pagan doctrines. What do you think we got going in the churches today? Every one, every one of the churches has a pagan doctrine running through it, and they're not all the same. They're variations of different doctrines. The Catholic Church is no different than a Jehovah's Witness. The Mormon is no different than the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ is no different than a Pentecostal or Baptist. They're just different pagan ministries. They've just adopted the same doctrine and twisted it. They've got no light. And I'm not judging them. It's just simply they are a day one creation. They, they don't have any form or void. They were falling in. We have to be raised to spiritual truth. Well, that's what the day one's about. Yeah. Giving him the light. But they twist it and say, oh, well, you got to have the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost does what? Nah, 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 nah. He moves upon the face of the waters. <coughs> I'll explain that tomorrow. Questions? Of course. You don't get it.